Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be practicing touch and go landings with my Quicksilver MX4. It has a 447 Rotac engine. I'll teach you how to be a safer pilot, what to think about on takeoffs and landings. So let's get in the air right now. If you're looking for an ultralight, I highly recommend the Quicksilver line of aircraft. Remember they're still in business. You can still get parts for this aircraft. There's just a ton of options that you can add on to this aircraft. Of course, I have ailerons, elevator, rudder, and throttle, a double surfaced wing so it flies a little faster. You can also get this version in a 377 or even a 477 engine. I'm also flying with a noise canceling headset combination helmet, and I'll tell you, friends, it makes a huge difference on the sound. I didn't believe it until I got it. This is really cool. I'm using a built-in GPS data logger in combination with my camera so I can provide you real flight data in real time. On the left side is ground speed. That's not airspeed, so don't get that confused. Above is your compass heading, and on the right is your altimeter. And you'll see we're about 770 feet above sea level, so that is actually zero feet above the ground. Now as we get to the end of the runway, I'll go through with you the thought process and some of the things that I'm thinking of before I take off. For example, I've already determined that we have a crosswind from the right to the left at about 10 miles an hour at about a 45 degree. That's not bad at all, but it's something you still have to compensate for when you're flying, takeoffs, and landings. Now, as we get ready for takeoff, of course, I want to check the control systems one last time. Look at the elevators, look at the ailerons, look at the rudder, make sure everything is fine. And now I'll go ahead and contact the tower. All right, we got clearance from the tower for touching goes. Actually, folks, I'm just kidding. We don't have a tower. I just threw that in for special effects. <laughs> okay, we're coming up with full power. Ground roll is only 50 feet. You'll notice that we do have a crosswind from the right to left, and I'll start a crab so that I can parallel the runway and correct for the drift that the crosswind is making. You always want to consider engine failure. And so right now, if the engine failed, I could put it back on the runway or I could land in the grass. That's not a problem. But very soon, those options are not available to me. So then I'm going to go to the next area that I could land safely. We have a 3,000 foot runway and you'll see them about 300 feet up at this time. If the engine failed right now, I am not going to do a 180 degree turn or more to get back to the runway. I'm going to look out straight ahead. That's the safest bet, either to the right or to the left. But since I have a crosswind to the right, I would probably pick the field to the right, as you see it right there. That's my landing spot at this moment. So you're always thinking about your options available to land in the event of power loss. Okay, I'm going to start making a left-hand turn. And of course, that field off to the right is not really going to be available to me at this time. So I'm thinking about, all right, what's the next possibility? Okay, now in just a minute here, I'll be making another left-hand turn on the downwind leg. The runway will be on my left-hand side. It looks like I'm about 700 feet above the ground. I could make the runway. In fact, I could land downwind at this point. For me, I like to use a very tight pattern around the airport for sure. General aviation aircraft are much further out. You can't do what we're doing. Okay, now I'm about halfway down the runway on the downwind side. I'm about 800 feet off the ground. And I've got a very tight pattern again, as you can see. So in the event of an engine failure at this point, I've got the runway made no problem. Either land in the grass or the runway. Okay, I'll be turning final now. And if you look at the altimeter, I'm about 600 feet above the ground at this point. If the engine failed here, I could easily make that runway. And that's the whole idea. Okay, you'll notice here on the final approach, my ground speed is about 33. That's not airspeed. You'll have to add about 10 miles an hour to that to get the airspeed. 
Okay, I'm now about 350 feet off the runway. Easily have it made if the engine fails. I'm going to drift to the left here and line up with the runway. Now at the end of the runway, I'm still 300 feet above the ground. Just an added safety factor. No reason to land on those numbers. There you go. Hold a little right aileron in there. Counterock that crosswind. Perfect. Gotta like it. All right, coming up on full power again. I've got some right aileron to counteract the drift from the right to the left. Now as we proceed higher, what are my options available to land safely? I can still make the runway right now, or I could land in the grass area. Again, those options will soon dissipate, and I'm going to think about my next possible landing site as I proceed higher. Always be thinking about your options to land in the event of power loss. That's number one important. Keep your pattern tight to the airport. As I turn final approach, looks like I'm about 700 feet above the ground, and I could make the runway right now if the engine failed. That's the whole idea. Don't want to land short. It's not going to be very fun. Now as we approach the runway here, I'm about 400 feet above the ground. Perfect. Engine quits right now. Not going to be an issue. Okay, it looks like we're about 300 feet above the runway. That's just where we want to be, nice and high. We can always come down, but we can't stretch a glide. That's one thing we're not going to do. I tell you, friends, it's just a lot of fun flying, and I hope this video helps you out too. Okay, coming down to the ground. Looks like we're going to start flaring out in just a moment. There you go. Perfect. Full power. Here we go. So always be thinking about your possibilities. What are my options to land right now? I could make the runway and land downwind, but that option would run out fairly quickly here in just a minute. As I'm halfway down the runway, I do see I could make a left hand. Again, keeping a tight pattern, if at all possible. I'm about 600 feet above the ground at this point. I easily have the runway made. Looks like I'm in a slight crab angle to compensate for the crosswind. If you can, of course, high approaches are safer than dragging it in. I've got plenty of altitude. I could turn the motor off right now and it wouldn't be a problem, obviously. That's the whole idea. Keep it safe. On this final landing, what I'm going to do is add power fairly low to the ground so that I can skim across the runway and land closer down toward the end of the runway because that's where my hangar is. Also, I noticed right there I started picking up turbulence off the buildings. That's a good place to add power. Holding right aileron right now. Slowing it down. Still holding it off the ground. There you go. In my next video, we'll do slips, S-turns, and I'll show you other techniques that you can use on a high approach to get down on the runway safely. Okay, I'm parked. Going to turn the fuel line off, turn the radio off, let the engine run for just a minute to drain some of that fuel out of the uh, system. So when looking for an ultralight, again, the Quicksilver is just a great choice. They're still in business. You can still get parts for them, and that's why I fly one of them. So you guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.